Okay, so this is a part two of why I find value in cryptocurrency. And um, Nicole, I was trying to explain to her that if you own a lot of real estate, um, first off, if you want to get money, it takes a, a long time to kind of sell your property. But at the same time, let's just say if someone wants to sue you, it's very easy to go after your real estate. It's easy for them to do a search on you, find out where your real estate assets are, and they put a lien on your property. Does that, does that all kind of make sense, Nicole? Mm -hmm. And so the reason why crypto is awesome, and you're going to laugh, but let's just say now someone threatens to sue me now, and I decide to take that, remember the $2 million of equity I have in my real estate? What if I yeah. go take a hard money loan and buy $2 million of crypto? Now this guy, whoever wants to sue me, or even the government, let's say the government wants to seize all my assets, they can't touch that $2 million of crypto. That crypto code, I could give it to someone else. I can move it you know, to a, a, a bank account in China, anywhere you want. I mean, it's it can be from the government. Yeah, so the government can't put a loan on. But here's another thing too. So if someone actually now threatens to sue me, I can actually go back to the person and be like, hey, go ahead. You're going to get this like $2 million judgment, but I'll own no assets. By the time you want to foreclose on me, the, the, the hard money guy already put a loan on my properties. So now you can't even get paid on your judgment because if you decide to collect your on your judgment, that hard money guy has to get paid first and then you get paid. Does that make sense? So now when they want to go after my real estate, it's worthless because I got a loan and I converted that money into crypto. Okay. Does, well, does that make any sense? So yeah, so basically now all this equity, I converted into Bitcoin. And even if they sue me in court and get a judgment, they're going to get zero because my net worth all of a sudden now is worth zero or it's not worth anything because there's already a loan. There, my, my real estate is fully loaned out or leveraged. Does that make sense? Kind of. Can you get your money back from? So how do you transfer? Yeah, it's it's a lot like Venmo. You are already using Venmo, so it makes it very easy to explain to you. If I try to explain it to an old person, they're gonna be like, "What?" You know. But just imagine instead of on your Venmo account, instead of saying two hundred dollars, it could say five Bitcoin, two Ethereum, three Litecoin. You can have all these different other currencies, and the only thing is that, like, obviously, it would make more sense to have something called a stable coin. And a stable coin is, is a crypto that's based on the dollar. So if we went back to that list, remember how I sent you that top list of cryptos? Yeah. So the fourth biggest coin is called Tether, and it's basically a stable coin. One Tether is worth one dollar. And so you could technically, if you wanted to have all your money in dollars, but still in crypto form, you could just own a bunch of Tether. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... Um, so it, it's a lot like Venmo and like, you know how like you can send v v your Venmo money to your friends. You can do the same thing. So you could send your Bitcoin to your friend and they usually Venmo is a little bit faster because you immediately get it. But Bitcoin usually takes like a couple minutes for the transaction to clear. You can use other coins that clear faster though. But it, the fact that you use Venmo, it, it makes it very easy. So just imagine a Venmo network, but instead of sending dollars, you're sending whatever currency you want. But then do you know how in Venmo you can then transfer your dollars into your bank account of yeah. Bank of America? You can do the same thing. So what you could do is you could send your crypto to your either, either your Robinhood wallet or your Coinbase wallet, and then you can have Coinbase convert it into cash and move it into your Bank of America checking account. Well, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. so it's basically, but like, you know, for us, it doesn't matter because we have a stable currency. Our dollar is stable. But like, let's just say you're now in India or you know, Iran, I gave you Iran as an example. I mean, why would you want to hold the Iranian dollar if in two weeks it'll be worth, you know, 25% less when you could just hold, you know, a crypto or you could even turn your crypto into tether, which is then based on the US dollar. So if you are in a foreign country and you want to hold dollars, you could just use crypto to, to buy tether and you could hold tether, which is paired to the US dollar. Okay. And then remember, I just told you that hustle too, that once your money's in crypto form, it's a lot harder for a government or if someone wants to sue you, it's a lot harder for someone to be able to seize that asset. Much, much harder, depending on how tricky you are too. And like, there's ways that you can hide your crypto um, even more if you really wanted to. So yeah, does that all make sense? Did I put you to sleep? <laughs> Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, uh, I try to explain everything. I think, I think we're done now. Do you have any other things you want to talk about? Like we could do real estate and other stuff like that, or do you want to take, take a break? I'm actually going to end this video too.